What is up YouTube gang? It's your boy Friday Random Media and I'm back on this Friday with another video and today I'm going to be doing a little breakdown, a little review, just giving a few of my thoughts on the new Spider-Man movie Across the Spider-Verse. Now before we dive in make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and comment down below what you guys think about the movie and what theories you guys may have. So I'm going to be breaking down some of the goods, the bads, the greats, and then of course at the end give some of my theories. Now, let's get into the good parts. Let's begin with the good. Spider-Verse 2, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Something I really liked was the intro. I think diving into Gwen's character, giving her some spotlight, showing some of her history with her father, I think this was a really good way to start the story considering, you know, we didn't really know much about Gwen in from Into the Spider-Verse. So getting a little change of pace there, getting to know more about her as a character, I did like. Another thing that I, of course, liked about this was the animation, the choreography, the cinematography, lots of iconic moments and lots of really good shots, just like the first movie. You know, there's a lot of iconic shots in that one. The fight scenes were fantastic. The choreography and the cinematography, like the way they captured the swinging and the chase scene, all of that, you felt the anxiety or you felt the, like, you know, you felt the embrace of being a superhero when he was swinging through the city now diving into the bats and there wasn't that many bad things about this movie i was kind of grumpy and tired at the time when i saw it so i might have been nitpicky at the time but looking back on it there wasn't too many things i could break down as bad so i will say this this may be a hot take across the spider-verse is not as good as Into the Spider-Verse. And I have, you know, come across some backlash for that, but let me explain because one thing that I really loved about Into the Spider-Verse was we got to know a lot about Miles. We got the insight on Miles' life, how he handles situations, and the story was ultimately surrounded by Miles while in Across the Spider-Verse, it split its main character is more between Gwen and even Miguel took a lot of the spotlight. Spider tw Spider-Man 2099 took a lot of the spotlight in this movie. So, not necessarily bad, but um, you know, it would have been great to get more depth on those characters. Now, moving on to the greats. Plenty of great and fa fantastic things about this movie. I'll start with the cameos. Hobie Brown, Spider-Man, Spider-Punk. I notice a lot of these things with these spider these spider verse movies is that they're actually improving a lot of characters that were somewhat lacking in the comics whether it's narratively or design wise design wise they're making a lot of characters look way better than the comics maybe another hot take i don't know another thing that they did really well with this movie and the cameo specifically is nothing felt shoehorned in it was really, you know, everything fit the narrative, everything fit the story. It kind of expanded on all the other Spider-Man movies in its own way. You know, for example, the live action references. Tobey Maguire and his Uncle Ben being a canon event. Andrew Garfield and his uncle, the canon event. You know, <laughs> funny that I say that like they themselves are Spider-Man. Another thing, Donald Glover showing up as the Prowler in a live action version. That was so unexpected, but it was so dope to see. Donald Glover's had his hand in Spider-Man creations for years now, and it's I hope we get to see him as Prowler in an actual either MCU movie or if the Sony-verse continues and hopefully makes it a good film. Some cartoon references, we got Spider-Man Unlimited, super dope with the nano suit. I always loved that suit as a kid. We got Spectacular Spider-Man. It was pretty dope that he even got some lines in the movie. Of course, at the end, we got the OG group from Into the Spider-Verse. You know, I was wondering where Spider-Man Niar was. I was wondering, you know, we got Penny Parker back. Oh man, and Peter B. Parker in Mayday. That is gonna be such a great combo in the next movie. I can already tell they're gonna do a lot of cool stuff with those two. So we've talked about the goods, the bads, the greats, but before I drop any theories, I do want a general statement to kind of wrap it up. I thought it was a great movie. I think it was just a hair behind Into the Spider-Verse, um, but I feel like once when we see the third movie, Beyond the Spider-Verse, a lot of these things are going to tie back into each other, and the story is really going to be feeling way more complete. Maybe they were working on one movie, 
and they decided, you know what, this is going to take way too long. It's going to be like a five-hour film. Let's split it up into two. That's my guess, at least. All in all, the story was great. I'm excited to see where it goes. I loved the twist at the end, with Prowler being Miles himself. I think it's going to lead to a lot more stuff. Maybe even Gwen fighting herself, a different version of herself. Um, you know, lots of different things that they can do just based off this ending. Definitely recommend it to anyone who's a Spider-Man fan, anyone who's a fan of animation, uh, anyone who's a superhero fan. Even if you just like fun action or family movies, this would definitely be one to go check out. I would give it probably like an 8.7, 8.9. I don't think it's quite there at 9 yet, but definitely a super dope ass movie. Now, as far as theories go, as far as beyond the Spider-Verse goes, one thing that I think is going to happen is Gwen and her father will probably have like a similar interaction, a result to what Miles and his father, whatever that interaction will be in the next movie, because we all know the canon event. Miles may have lost his uncle, but the canon event is turning out to be him losing his dad. So we got to see how that plays out. I think with Gwen losing her father, and maybe her losing Peter was the canon event, and I just don't remember it. But her and her father, I feel like they're going to have a very similar interaction. So on to theory number two, the spot. Where will the antagonist go here? Because he's looking like he can travel to different universes uh, in the multiverse just based on a whim due to his powers. And what he did when he turned into the black dark void creature, we have yet to see what that's going to consist of. So in my opinion, very specific theory here, but I think the spot will become the multiversal singularity. He's going to screw up a lot of stuff in a different timeline or different universe or different dimension. But in the end, I think that he will come back around. Um, Miles and Peter, Gwen will give him a very good talk. Uh, and by the third act, he may sacrifice himself to set the multiverse right. He may redeem himself in the end. Now onto a third theory. I don't think the spot is gonna be only one to die, obviously. I think Spider-Man 2099 may die himself, may sacrifice himself. And how I think this could really be cool is after the chase scene and all you know the tough love, I guess you could say, about him and Miles, it would be very cool to see Miguel, Spider-Man 2099, come back around and try to protect Miles from perhaps, you know, multi-dimensional threat like the spot or even Spider-Man Prowler or Aaron, whatever it may be in this new dimension. So if Spider-Man 2099 was to come back around and put himself on the line for Miles, that would be a very cool moment to see. And finally, my last theory, which may be actually a pretty popular theory and a speculated theory is beyond the Spider-Verse, Miles is gonna be brought to the real world. He's gonna be brought into live action and from there, we're going to get the live action Miles Morales, probably trilogy if I was to make a guess. Now, if I was to really reach far here, I would say, yeah, we're going to get four live action Spider-Man on screen at the same time. But I honestly don't see that happening. I see Miles coming uh, into the live action reverse, probably with either Tom Holland, less likely Andrew Garfield. But it would be very cool to have Miles be... Um, tutored or you know taught by Andrew Garfield Spider-Man he gives that Peter B Parker vibe he gives that spider bro that spider dad vibe so that would be so fun to see we've already seen the Venom verse you know it's really hard to say where they're gonna go from it and where Miles is gonna end up in the live action verse now before I wrap this up I do want to take a moment to plug in my own original creation my own comic book coming out at the end of this year, December 2023. It's a comic anthology including three separate characters, three main characters, two of which video descriptions down below in the comments. Godman the Lifebringer, who is kind of like a Golden Age Superman yet Silver Surfer type character, and Zorg of the Komodo Village, who is kind of like a sci-fi wizard, uh, druid type character. So. So if you want to keep up with my comic anthology, subscribe and make sure to follow me on TikTok by the same name, Friday Random Media. Thank you guys for tuning in. Comment down below what you want to see next, whether it's a versus battle or a what if scenario or another movie or comic breakdown. Thank you guys for stopping by and tuning in. Peace out.